Hi, thanks for joining here today. My name is Bina, the application engineer for offshore product at Bentley Systems. Today, I am going to talk about the unique solution Moses has for transportation analysis. While the cargo is being transported from somewhere in the South Korea to the Gulf of Guinea, for example, it experienced the motions for six degrees of freedom. The acceleration from this motion generates the inertial load. So, we need to check the structural stability against this load. In this presentation, I will present the approaches to create the inertial load and structural solution Moses has. For those who are not familiar with the transportation analysis, let me start by explaining general procedure from the viewpoint of structural analysis. First of all, we have to model this kind of integrated system of jacket and cargo. Then, we have to perform the diffraction analysis to see how much hydrodynamic pressure acts on the submerged panel. With this information, we can get the response of the vessel. This is called RAO, and some people, normally structural engineers, call this as transfer function. The output of this analysis is displacement, velocity, and acceleration per unit amplitude. Based on this RAO, we can calculate the load acting on each beam. Then, we use this load for subsequent structural analysis and each post-processing. Here, in this presentation, I am going to deal with these two parts, creating inertial load from motion areas and structural stop from that load. Here are the three approaches people normally do to create the inertial load with MOSES. First of all, from the motion data, we can get maximum statistical values for each degree of freedom then use this data for load generation. Second approach is the stochastic approach. I mean, MOSES computes response spectrum of each beams, then determine the, hydro, hyd, determine the dynamic stresses based on probability usually defined. This is the most advanced and industry recommended practice since 1980s. The last one is to perform the time synthesis to obtain maximum probable acceleration for each degree of freedom. This is a unique solution MOSES has. This approach uses a synthesized C and response spectrum to compute the inertial load. I am going to talk about these three approaches and show you how this analysis can be done in a single MOSES package. The first approach is the most simplest way among these three approaches. So this is a very widely used method. Let me talk about this one first. After the diffraction analysis, as you see in the screen, we can get this kind of motion response operators called RAOs. This describes the response, response of the system against unit wave amplitude. Based on this motion RAO, MOSES is able to compute motion statistics under the specific C state. This is a statistic report of MOSES. As you see, the motion statistics for each degree of freedom at a specific point are reported based on each probability. Let's talk about this report a little bit more. After calculating the RMS of the motions, MOSES employs the factors to compute each probability. For example, MOSES calculates these maximum values by multiplying RMS with a factor 3.720. Here, the maximum means the probability, 
the probability is 1 over 1000. One thing to note is that the pace is not considered here. I mean, statistic values here is the maximum motions, which typically do not occur at the same time. Anyway, what some of the structural engineers does with this table is to take maximum motions for heap, roll, and pitch for use in the other structural software they are familiar with. Then, create the load cases from these motions. Then, do the steeple analysis and code checking in that structural software. This is the most simplest way, but I think it is worth talking about some of the limitations of this limit, limitations this approach has. Let me talk more about this one. First of all, I'd like to point out that the maximum motions here. I model this kind of barge and cargo system and got this motion statistic report. Here, what structural engineers do is to take each maximum roll, pitch, and heat and combine them. I mean, combine the each rotational accelerations with heap. The important thing is, at each combination, they change the sign because sign of this low and pitch. Because this is from the motion, it can happen any of the directions. And by changing the signs, they think they consider the pace conservatively. Then, do the structural analysis and code checking against the most critical case. But this is too conservative. I mean, as I said before, this kind of maximum motions typically do not happen simultaneously. In other words, pacing of the motion is not considered in this statistic table. To get an idea, I ran three hour time domain simulation with the exactly same model and the environment. For your reference, the environment is the BMC, so the pitch is almost zero. As you see, maximum roll of both approach shows similar tendency. Whereas, um, the heave is almost zero, but uh, if you look at the pitch here, each, uh, no, heave here, uh, it almost, it shows very big difference. That means if we do not consider the pace, we use almost 10 times higher heat for structural stability check. I personally think this is unreasonably high. To get, to get more clear idea, I land the structural analysis with these two kinds of motion properties and compare the stresses of the beams. Here is the result. The structural analysis result on the left hand side is a result from the acceleration data without the consideration of the pace. And the one on the right hand side is from the extreme of the accelerations in time domain. I just used the accelerations you've seen right before. As you see, the bendings for minor axis shows almost 10 times difference. For your reference, I did not include the self-weight of the members yet. As you may notice here, if your structure gets more complex, the approach to take a statistics accelerations without consideration of pace makes more unrealistic inertial loads. Sometimes people I met think this kind of conservative approach is okay uh, because uh, okay as a preliminary analysis if there is no structural failure, but I personally believe this is an unrigorous approach. Uh, anyway, let me explain some more uncomfortable fact this approach has. I mean, the pace is not only limitation this approach has. Here in this slide, I'd, I'd like to talk about 
how most of other structural analysis software, software create the inertial load. The picture on the left hand side is describing the de embert inertial force generation method. Here, before going into detail, I'd like to emphasize that I'm not talking about the theory itself. I mean, I'm talking about how the software uses the theory. Anyway, let's assume that this is a, this point M on the left hand side is a joint, the structural member connected to. And the point O here is the motion center input to the software. Most of the time, this point O is the center of the gravity of the cargo. What software does is to calculate the centrifugal acceleration and tangential acceleration at the joint M. Then, take the components of those accelerations for each axis, which is the opposite sign of the applied acceleration. It is shown in red in the picture on the left hand side here. Software repeats this process for all rotational degrees, degrees of freedom, then use the average acceleration to calculate the applied load on a beam connecting those two joints. Here, I want to point out the software only uses the accelerations to compute the tangential term. I mean, velocity terms are normally ignored. In this case, it is centrifugal force. Furthermore, as you see on the right hand side, most of the structure software uses only one motion center. Only one motion center here. But as all of you may know, there is no one fixed center of motion. I mean, motion center of rho, pitch, yaw are all different. So this alpha, this angle alpha here should be different for each rotational degrees of freedom. This is the second fact I want to point out. The last thing I want to point out is the way to combine the dynamic and mean case. Uh, what I mean, what I mean, mean case is the self weight of the structure here. For the structural analysis, the dynamic load, I mean, inertial load should be combined with mean case. But unlike stating load, mean case, dynamic case do not have a sign because they are from the frequency domain. So it could be tension or compression or in-plane or out-of-plane bending. So after generating the dynamic cases, we need to think about how we combine these dynamic loads with the static mean case. Here on the screen, green rectangular box here means the member, beam, and the blue arrow means the direction of the loads of mean case. So the two members on the screen are taking a compression from the way, separate. In this case, if the dynamic load is, is compression, it gives us more conservative result. But if it is tension, if the dynamic case is tension, they are canceled out each other. So total load could be lower than our expectation. Some of the engineers believe they can catch these kind of things by changing the signs of applied motion. This is not a true because what I am talking about here is the sign of internal loads and stresses, not the direction of the applied motion. I mean, internal loads from the positive and negative roll motion can have same sign. So, if the structure is complex, no one can sure change in direction of the applied acceleration can change the direction of the internal load and its stresses of all members in the structures. This is another topic we need to think about. Now, let's look at the solution Moses has for transportation analysis. 
The first solution Moses has is to create the inertial load based on probability. This approach is called as stochastic approach. Like motion statics, it also uses the RAOs for load, but this is totally different one. Let me explain details. As you see on the screen, it starts from motion RAOs. I mean, the accelerations are used to determine the inertial forces acting on each member. These forces are then used to compute the stresses due to unit amplitude of the waves, which are called stress RAOs. The response spectrum is determined from this stress RAO and specified wave spectrum. To be specific, spectrum is computed by integrating the product of member load RAO squared times the spectrum. Then, maximum dynamic stress that may occur is calculated by applying a probability factor to the RMS value. Moses uses 1 over 1000 as a default probability. Of course, users can change this value as they want. In other words, as you see in the screen, I mean, this bottom side, Moses calculates the response spectrum of each beam in the whole structure and extracts the inertial loads from that response spectrum based on probability. This approach has been industry recommended practice since 1980s. And this, this is approach Moses used to create the transportation loads. Of course, pacing between the degrees of freedom is exactly considered, and the steepness between Basel and the cargo can be exactly considered also. And you can consider the effect of wind when calculating the stating load. Anyway, dynamic loads, dynamic loads computed with this approach will be combined with mean cases for the structural check. Here, Moses has very unique solution for this kind of combination. And I think it is worth mentioning here. What I mean, after making the load using stochastic approach, we still need to think about how to combine the dynamic load with the mean case, because again, we do not know the sign of a dynamic load. Here, structural solver of Moses has a very special solution. As you see in the screen, after solving the mean case and dynamic case separately, Moses set the sign of a dynamic case to follow the sign of mean case. In other words, if the member is in tension in mean case, dynamic case becomes tension. And same for the bending and resulting shear. This is, this is very widely used method among the structural engineers when the sign is missing during the load computation. They normally use this method to combine the seismic load with the stating load because seismic load do not have a sign. Uh, of course, uh, details are different, but concept is the same. This is not the all Moses has for load combination. Moreover, if a member is slightly in tension, we need to think about which case result in more conservative result? I mean, we need to think about the sign of a dynamic case because most of the time, the beam under the compression is more likely to fail than when it is in tension. This means dynamic case should be the compression even if sign of the mean case is tension. So, what Moses does is to check the amount of tension and compare it with the dynamic load. Then, if the tension is greater than the two times of dynamic load, dynamic load becomes tension. But the opposite case, dynamic becomes compression to catch the buckling of, of the member. Through this way, way of load combination, you can pick up 
every possible case which could occur during the journey. Moses also has a very special solution for tie-down members. As all of you may know, type of, type of the roles tie-down can take varies. I mean, it depends on the way it is how it is installed in the real world. Normally, it is assumed that it only registers against the dynamic load. And sometimes, it is also assumed that member cannot take attention because deck it, deck it is connected to is not reinforced enough to get tension from the tie down. For example, if the tube, direct, tube is directly ready to the double plate on deck, it is considered as a compression only member because where the length of the circumference of the plate is the only resisting area against the tension. This is not an unusual thing. In this kind of case, the tension acts as a compression of the opposite side of a tie down. The solution Moses has is to remove the tension, remove this tension here, then multiply it by two conservatively, and this factored load is applied to the tie down at the opposite side. This is the one solution Moses has for tie down members. Without this solution, it is very time consuming to do this kind of local check by your hand calculation, with your hand calculation. And here is another solution for tie down members. This time, let's talk about how do we predict the failure of the composite section with a tube and a plate. The picture on the left hand side shows how tie down members are installed in a real world. As you see, normally they are welded to the deck through the plates to secure the resistance here. As you see, because this is a kind of composite section, the general allowable formula which is indicated in the structural code cannot be directly applied because we do not know the boundary condition at the connection point of the tube and the plate. We need to think about the way to predict the structural failure of this section. One of the way is to consider this one of the way is to consider the two sections separately. I mean we can take those sections, those two sections separately and apply the allowable formula for each section. But in this case, compression governs the failure mode. So boundary condition at this point is very important. Here, we need to make an engineering decision. I mean, we need to do some more work to check this section. This is not a simple job. Moses has a special solution for this one. Instead of looking at each beams here, each plate and beams, Moses computes the Euler, Euler buckling load of the full beam. Then check if it is if it fails or not. I mean, Moses computes the buckling load using this Euler critical stress calculation formula. Here, as you see, the formula is the function of the slenderness ratio of the beam. So the Moses calculates the slenderness ratio of the, I mean, equivalent slenderness ratio of the full composite section. Then use this equivalent ratio, slenderness ratio to calculate the critical failure stress. This global buckling approach is the one indicated in DMV node 30.1. This is a very good approximation which has long been used. In this slide, I'd like to talk about the way Moses distributes the load along the member. As you see in the screen, instead of using average acceleration between two joints, Moses connects the acceleration at each joint, at each end point linearly. Then use this acceleration for load generation. As you see on the screen, if the member has a segmented member, I mean butt point, 
uh, Moses is snarled enough to catch these different section properties along the beam, then generate the load. Yeah. Until now, uh, we have been talking about the stochastic approach and the unique structural solution Moses has. In this page, let me talk about another approach to create transportation load. Here, as indicated on the screen, the inertial load is generated from the time synthesis procedure. I mean, Moses uses the synthesized C data to get maximum and minimum forces and moments during the trans transportation. This is a very unique solution. To be specific, after the RAO comput computation, Moses determines the time when the maximum occurs against the synthesized C. Then, these times are then used in the creation of deterministic structural loads. The investig investigation time is for three hours. This means the loads from this process is the probable maximum loads of a three-hour simulation for each input environment. The motion properties from this process consider the pacing and the inertial <coughs> pacing and the inertial inertial load has a sign, so we do not need to care about the load combination. Also, we add an option to export this extreme motion data in SAX format. So, if someone feels familiar with SAX, they can use these motion properties instead of taking the values from the motion statistic table. Just for your reference, we also add a feature to export audio in SAX format also. Anyway, here you may think it would take much computation time because motions comes from three hour simulation. But this approach does not require such a, such a long computation time since they are not from the full time domain analysis. As you see in the screen, Instead of solving response of the system at each time step against the synthesized C, Moses combined the synthesized C with the spe response spectrum to pick the maximum response. So we can think this is a multiple, multiple frequency domain analysis rather than time domain. The difficulty with this approach is to decide the number of selected times to consider. If too many are chosen, the computation time would become prohibitive. But if too few, there is a serious doubt as to whether a critical case has been investigated or not. So Moses searches for the maximum and minimum minimums for each degrees of freedom each headings and each specified environment. For example, if you have three environments and eight headings, maximum 216 load cases will be created. Of course, again, you can export all these acceleration properties in SAX format as you see in the screen. This is a tow info file, SAX automatically, Generate, uh, Moses automatically generates. Yep, this is the end of my presentation. And uh, let me, let me hand it over to Georgina Maldonado for the Q&A sessions. Hello everyone. I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm Georgina Maldonado and I have been with the Moses product for more than 25 years. If you have questions, uh, type them into that Q&A uh, section on your screen. And uh, we have received some, so let me um, start with the ones we have so far. OK, so I think this first one is coming from a person that is used to doing structural analyses via another product. Um, I could not get the restraint loads at the end of the tie downs. Where can I find the restraint loads? 
Okay, so um, in Moses, it's a different approach than the other traditional structural analysis programs. We we connect our tie downs to the barge, so that the restraint loads are actually what you the loads that are the connectors between the tie down and the barge. So if you are looking for the loads in the tie down, there in the post processing menu, there's the in Moses there's the structural post processing menu, and in that menu you can just get the loads. Now if you just ask for the loads, just you know all the loads, um, of course that's going to create lots and lots of output. Um, you can also use a, a selector and just tell it to report the loads on the tie down. Okay, I have another question. How do you include G sine theta? Okay. Thank you for that question. We do well. This a lot of people ask that question. Okay. Um, so uh, there's g sine theta. We we do include it in the motions in, in the motions analysis. So when we are doing the stochastic analysis, um, we do include uh, what the mean position would have is during the motions analysis, and we include the g sine theta. Um, also, if you if you included wind in your definition and the wind causes a list, for example, then of course there is a g sine theta included in that mean force when we compute that. So um, when we do the combination of the static plus the dynamic, there's a possibility of including the g sine theta in the static and g sine theta in the dynamic analysis. So I, I hope that um, <coughs> answered that question. Okay, another question we have. Where can I get more information about this time synthesis? Is there a tutorial or a white paper on this technology? Okay, um, maybe I will, I, I don't have the reference right in front of me, but we are going to be publishing a white paper on with more information about wh what we do here with the standard uh, Moses analysis automated tools. So. Um, you know, stay on this channel and you will be getting some more information on the time synthesis. Okay, another question. I have a model whose tie downs and support cans are already defined. Can I run the transportation macro with this model? Okay, so um, in Bitna's presentation, right? He he showed how there's a different load case that is include that is made for the tie downs because um, if you think about it, in real life, after loadout, the tie downs are not there. Okay, so after loadout, you have the static load case on the support can. So that when you do the motions analysis, that's the dynamic part. The tie downs only see the dynamic, or only see dynamic loads. Okay, so now back to your question. I have a model whose tie downs and cans are already defined. Okay, so if you are going to be using the Moses uh, automated tools, um, yes, you're going to have to remove those tie downs and cans. And I, we have a, it's, it's not that complicated to put them back in, uh, in Moses. Um, you, for example, usually all of the support cans are, have the same properties, so you just define one uh, class. And then you, you tell Moses which nodes on your jacket are being supported. And Moses goes in and puts those in for you. Um, the tie down, you can take the tie downs out. Um, and in Moses, uh, if, if the tie downs have different properties, there is a way that you can assign a property to each tie down. Um, it's fairly easy to put the tie downs back in. Um, you, tell, you tell it the, the distance from your cargo node and where to the barge where it's going to make that connection. Um, that's usually not a very uh, time consuming part of the uh, analysis. Uh, but uh, so in order, if you are going to do the structural analysis with the Moses automated tools, uh, yes, you're going to have to take those out of your, of your model. Now, if you're 
are going to be using Moses just to generate the accelerations. Uh, so Bitna sh towards the end showed how uh, Moses can generate accelerations ready for sex. So if that is the purpose in you using Moses, then uh, you can leave the tie down and can in that model when you put it into Moses. Okay, um, let's see, we're moving on here. Okay, when I use the transportation macros, can I change the water depth for tow motions? Okay, um, well, for tow motions, uh, we, we assume very deep waters. Okay, um, we did that. Uh, th this is something uh, because of the that's historical, or it's it's something that we the decision we made a very long time ago. Uh, usually for transportations, yes, they start. You are near the key, near shore. It could right unless you're in a fjord. Usually you're near shore and it's kind of shallow. But usually where you are transporting to, it is very deep. So that's why we made the decision to to use always deep water. Okay, next question. Tie down members can take tension. Okay, so th yes, this is another topic that we do get a lot of questions on. So by default, know that our tie downs cannot take tension. Oh, oh and uh, for those, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people know I'm from Texas, we call them tie downs. Um, probably in the other parts of the world, they refer to as sea fastenings. Um, my apologies if I've been using an unfamiliar term. Okay, back to the question. Can sea fastening members take tension? Okay, so our assumption is that no, they cannot take tension. And this goes back to the 1970s when they would just weld the tie downs to the barge deck. Okay, um, the, um, a lot of you that have they design barges or have had to do structural analysis of barges, you know that that barge plate, right, that barge plate it sometimes is not very thick and many times it cannot take tension. Um, depending on where it lands, right, if you if it, you try to make it land on a transverse framing, and which means it can take compression, right, but it probably still does not take tension. And so we, this is another decision back to the 1970s. So because of the way uh, projects were done back then, we left the default as, no, you cannot take tension. So this, what this really meant is that, so half of your tie downs would not be working, and therefore the, all of that load had to be transferred to the other half that is working. So the default is that the tie down load cases multiplied by two. And so that means that whatever is not working gets transferred to the other side. That's what we're trying to simulate by that uh, factor. However, um, I do know that uh, today, right, we, there's a lot of details that are done with the tie downs. A lot of people put a lot of work into it. And maybe you do have a connection that can take tension. And for such a, such a connection, we do have the minus tie 10 option. Um, this is in the automated tools, and if you use that option, then that will let you develop tension in the tie-down connection. So um, that is how, so that's answer to the question, can the C-fastenings take the tension? So the default is no, but we do have an option for it to be yes. Okay, here is uh, another question. After I run the automated transportation macros, I get a load which has the letter C. What does this letter mean? Okay, so um, thank you for using the automated tools. I'm glad to read that. So for those of you that uh, use the automated tools, you when you look at the output, we have a standard way of making these load cases. And the load case um, has, uh, we assign a letter to each environment. Okay, so, and you get to decide the letter. So the load case will carry the letter you assigned. It, by default, we do all uh, 45 degrees all around the clock. So the next set of uh, uh, characters in the load case name is a heading. If you are 
for example, doing a parametric study and have a uh, different draft and trim, um, we you can assign the different drafts and trims that, for example, one draft and trim could be A and the other one could be B. We call those processes, so that's a process. Okay, and so then what the person here is asking about is that last character. That last character can be an S or the last character can be a C. Okay, so the, the low cases ending with S, those are the ones we're calling the normal ones. Th those are the wind cases. Okay, so remember, we're doing wind and that's what we're including in the static load case. And then we are adding that dynamic deviation times the sine of the mean. And, okay, so Bitna had a couple of slides dedicated to that, that when we add the, the dynamic, we are including the sine of the mean. Okay, so that would be for the load cases that begin with S. I mean, excuse me, those are load cases that end in S. Okay, the question is about, what about the load cases that end in C? Okay, in some cases, the members are slightly in tension. Okay, and Bitna also had that one slide where if the dynamic tension was more than twice, then that would be the compression that would dominate. Okay, so that is what the C means, is that those cases are, represent, are trying to capture that slide that Bitna was saying, that if the mean of the member is slightly in tension and the compression case will govern, then the S is turned into a C. Okay, so I, I 